All right, cool. I figured it out. It was just a matter of stripping both these wires. I thought this was a bare wire, um, but uh, both these wires were coated on each earbud. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty cool. So, this says it's putting out 100 hertz, and my scope is fluctuating, shows it fluctuating between 90... Nine point five ish to a hundred point one ish. Pretty cool. Going up to two hundred here. Again, right there, just hovering within a tenth of a hertz. See how sensitive we are here. And pretty good. Getting up to the eight hundreds. Bad. I will say something. So, uh, you know, the folks that do the reviews on these things in the past have said that they just hate messing with these uh, dials over here. Um, I can see where it would be a lot nicer to have a real dial if you wanted to fool around with it, but. I mean, cost factor again. This does really cool stuff for very little money. So, I'm going to learn a lot with it. And by the time I can afford a, a more expensive one, I think I'll be on my way. But this is a neat little dodge if you don't have a, a signal generator laying around. Um, you know, these apps there's a lot more apps out there available if you've got a droid or a, um, an Apple I'm sure I've I'm one of like five Windows phone users on the nation and so I have uh, more difficulty finding apps I've got my new hundred to one Pro, which I'm going to play with here in a minute with some AC and I first wanted to show the uh, little calibration routine See, I've got it connected to the square wave signal generator right here, and uh, that's the square wave that comes out of it. Actually, looks better than the one I got with my other probe out of the box. I'm trying to find my way down in there. There we go. So I think something like. That right there is about as clean as I'm getting it. What do you think? Hey, had a battery failure there, so I don't know whether uh, I showed this already. But uh, with my new 100 to 1 test probe with a 100 mega ohm resistor, I'm able to uh, tap into house current as long as this is on battery power and I'm not creating any kind of uh, ground short. Because even though I'm using a Variac, it's not isolated. Um, I do not yet own an isolated power supply. So that's uh, it's on my shopping list. But the cool thing is uh, I am now able to uh, troubleshoot up to house current, 110 volts. And shouldn't be a problem going on up to 240. Yeah. Um, so anything I'll ever need to deal with around here, which will be cool because I have some uh, you know, inverters and things like that I'd like to uh, play with and see what their signals end up looking like. So I'm in uh, I'm in business as far as that's concerned. And also something I showed and may have been lost to the battery cards is that I am getting a difference in RMS reading versus. Uh, my standard fluke reading for the voltage 
my RMS says it's right in between 110 and 111 right now. Yet when I try my fluke, which is not corrected, it's not a true RMS reader. I am getting 115.7. So there's a fairly substantial difference there. Wish I had a third meter, like a, a true RMS, you know, trusty meter that I can now come full circle with. But I, right now I've got faith in this thing. I think it's correct. All right, good to go. Just read some crazy stats for fun. Yeah, so this says I have it at 59.2 volts, which eh, looks pretty close. Now it says 59.7, so... So that's a good sign. And... Damn near identical duty cycle the negative and the positive. It's yeah. beautiful. Everything's reading exactly as it ought to.